Hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. We're staring at my inver inverter here because today's episode is going to be electricity, wind and solar power, off-grid, 101. Okay, this is stuff that everybody needs to know if you're planning on going off-grid and using power. Alright, number one. Uh, th this is actually all mostly directed at uh, for, uh, Forever North's sanctuary because he is now off grid living in a tent in the woods in Maine and uh, he's having power problems. So, first thing, I've asked you a couple of times, I haven't got a straight answer on it yet, but uh, let's see if we can get it this time. Are you sure you have pure sine wave? Okay. It'll be the LF, which is low frequency, pure sine wave 8000. Make sure that you have the pure sine wave. If you have modified sine wave, you will have problems with computers and that kind of stuff. That's why you got to make sure you have the pure sine wave. I think I uh, stressed that enough when I originally talked to you about inverters, but uh, it's very important, pure sine wave. The difference is pure sine wave goes in perfect little swirls like that. Modified sine wave comes across, goes up, has a square top, comes down. Got a square bottom, goes up, square top. Okay. You want pure sine wave if you're going to be using any types of electronics. All right. Next. Fuses. Okay. You only need to put fuses in line where you might have a power surge. Where you, where you have controlled power, like on solar panels, coming in to your controllers. You do not need fuses between the solar panels and the controllers. Because you have controlled voltage coming in. The solar panels are set for like 13.7 volts or 13.9 volts um, that means it's a 12 volt panel okay you're not going to get much more than the 13 volts coming out of that panel into your controller and that's why you have a controller the controller balances that 13 something 14 volts whatever is coming in from your panels it balances it and turns it to make sure it controls it to be the proper voltage to go to your batteries. So you don't need any fuses in between any of that stuff. You don't need fuses from the solar panels to the controller. You don't need fuses from the controller to the batteries. Okay? Now, you see fuses over here. That is because this is go connected to my PMA, Permanent Mal uh, Magnet Alternator. That's the wind turbine. The reason I have fuses there is because that is not a controlled power. The faster the wind blows, the more power that thing is going to put out. And I want to protect my electronics down the line and my batteries down the line. So I've got a rectifier here. If I get start getting high voltage, uh, I've heard claims of a thousand times the uh, output. But let's say, for instance, I only get a hundred times the output. So, 1,680 watts is what that um, PMA is rated for, and you get a hundred times that. That's a lot of voltage. That's going to cause problems. Okay, uh, or a lot of wattage. That's going to cause problems. So, you put fuses in line to protect your electronics down line. Don't worry about it when you're talking about solar panels. Your solar panels, and the sun is not going to suddenly produce more electricity through your solar panel. It can only con uh, make exactly what the solar panel is built for. It might make less, but it will never make more. All right. The reason I have a fuse in line here coming up to my heating element, that's my dump load. A dump load is taking any extra power 
that might slip past any of my controllers before it um, hurts my batteries, that's the dump load will click on and take that extra electricity away and send it over to a heating element and dissipate it into the air for right now. Later that's going to go to my solar water heater. But I have to protect that because that voltage could get pretty high. Okay, that's not a, a constant 12 volts coming. That, that could be 14, 15, 16 volts. That's the, uh, an over voltage that's causing the problem. That's why you have a dump load. You dump that extra voltage. For, the, for little things like North's uh, system, he doesn't need a dump load controller. He doesn't need a heating element. He, all he needs is his controller and his solar panels. And he doesn't need um, fuses and cutoff switches all over the place. Okay? Remember, this unit has a cutoff switch right there. It says off. When you turn that off, this thing does not run any power. It takes all the power out. It, it, there's no power consumed. Okay, so, so there's your cutoff switch. Don't put anything in the lines. If you put things in your lines, you're going to run up into problems. Okay, no, no cutoff switches, no fuses. Don't worry about that stuff. You're not going to have a problem. Now, if you get a lightning strike, that fuse ain't going to do you any good anyway. And, as you've probably noticed, you're having problems with your electronics because, first of all, you may not have pure sign, and second of all, you've got fuses everywhere. That's confusing your wiring. All right, now, if you get a control uh, unit that all of a sudden gives you an overload, there could be a problem with your wiring. Okay, now... We're going to take a quick step out here to the solar panels. All right, on your solar panels, you see I've got the junctions here that tie a bunch of panels together and then give me one wire goes, that goes into my controller. Okay, every one of these is marked negative or positive. Okay, so you got a negative and a positive. This one says plus on it. This one's got a negative sign. Okay, so they, there's your positive, there's your negative. Now, these wires are black. So if you got um, black wires going in, see, I got white wires going in, two, two of them, excuse me, and I marked one of them black. So I know which one is the negative. And you don't have to mark both of them, just one of them. Mark one of them black so you know that is the one that goes to your negative. When you hook it up to your controller, it's very easy to get those things crossed. If you do cross them, you will have problems with weird re readings. You will have problems with improper charging. Your solar pa panels aren't going to charge your batteries correctly. Your wiring is very important. Take your time. Make sure you have your wires marked and you, may, you hook those wires up correctly inside on your controller. You got to make sure they go to the positive and negatives correctly. Same thing coming off of it to your battery. Make sure that your positives and your negatives are properly connected here and properly going to the right places on your battery. All right? That's a very important thing. Now I saw I saw your um, connections on your batteries north. Um, they're acceptable. Uh, you usually like to try to keep your battery cables all the same length if possible. Um, it's not necessarily super important. You notice that that jumper right there is a little shorter than, it, than this one. Probably an inch or two. Ain't going to make that much difference when you're using big wire like this on a 2 watt wire. Okay? Next, battery maintenance. You, the only water you want to put into a battery is distilled water. Don't use tap water. Don't use bottled water from your drinking water. Okay, It's got to be distilled water. Now, in an extreme emergency, if you were in the military, you were stuck in the Sahara Desert, and the only thing you had 
was water from an oasis and your battery needed water, go ahead and put it in. It'll get you out of trouble, but it's going to ruin your battery. Bottom line, the sediments, the sedimentation that's in the water is going to ruin the battery. You want distilled water in your batteries, and you need to check those on a regular basis. I do mine every three months on a regular basis. Now you can see I've been getting some um, sediment buildup on the uh, caps here. That's telling me that uh, that battery has been picking on an extra load and I'm going to have to check out why th that one battery's got it. It could be because of this connection right here. That's the uh, dump load and it's that's one of the batteries tied in on the dump load. All right. Very important stuff. Remember all of this. Your wiring um, sizes. Uh, you you want to use stranded wires. All right. Let me jump further on this because this uh, this is getting kind of long. The next thing you want to uh, think about. Where was I going with this? Oh, I should write this stuff down. <laughs> um, oh yeah. All right, I noticed that North, you, you constantly talk about amps. I got 400 amps. I got uh, four batteries, uh, uh, 400 amps each. I'm running 800 amps. Forget that. No, you don't, okay? Here's the thing. There's a difference between 120 volts and 12 volts, okay? Your, your batteries are rated for amp hours, AH, not A. Okay, so they're, they're amp hour batteries if they're deep cycle batteries. So you got your 400 amp hours between two 6 volt batteries. All right, that's well and good. But that's at 12 volts. At 120 volts after it's going into the inverter, that's 10 times or one tenth of the um, amperage. So you're actually, you're, if your batteries are rated for 400 amp hours, that means it'll run 400 amps at for one hour at 12 volts. Okay, if you're running at 120 volts, it'll be one tenth of that or 40 amps for one hour. So that's like two 20 amp breakers for one hour and those batteries are dead. Now remember I told you your batteries are, if they're lead acid, um, wet type batteries, they, you can only use 50% of the battery. So, if you're, you're thinking of that, now you're down to 20 amps for one hour. Okay, and then that 20 amps is what you would have that freezer on, a 20 amp breaker. And that means you can run that for one hour on those batteries. And you're already at your kill point. You've got to shut it off. So, You've got to remember the numbers there are a play. Forget the amps. You want to remember the, the, um, the calculations go as pi, P-I-E, power equals volts times amps, okay? And I know the I-E is confusing, but uh, if you know about electricity, um, you know that I is... Uh, and E is the energy and the voltage and so forth and so on. So picture a round circle, draw a line through the center, put a big P at the top half. Okay, that's power. That's half of your equation. Down below that you have I and, a, and another line and E. So uh, one quarter is I, one quarter is E. Power is at the top. So voltage times current or amps equals power. So if you've got 12 volts times uh, 400 amps, you got 4,000 watts, 12 volt. Okay, now it's, it's confusing, I know, but you're talking about converting your 12 volt system to 120 volts, so you're using, uh, you're, you're starting with one tenth of the power that you need. That's why I have so many batteries here to run my system. Because these batteries at nighttime keep the refrigerator running. 
and uh, they they will drop down to 12 volts, 12.3 uh, volts uh, overnight. But as soon as the sun comes out, solar panels charge them back up again, and the next thing you know, I'm up in the 13s. All right. So I hope that clarifies some for you guys. And remember, if you need to, down in the comment section, ask a question. If I can answer it, I will. If I can't, I'll look it up and I'll let you know. All right. That's about all for today. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up down there. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. If you have subscribed, thank you. And welcome aboard. Also, North... Um, next time you start explaining something about your electronics, please don't sit in a chair, smoke your cigarette, and tell me about it because I can't see what you're talking about. Walk over there and say, this is, this is what the reading is on my controller. This is what I'm getting. And don't start flashing through the buttons and hitting the switches over and over again. The modes are right there, but I know what the modes are. Right now it's 13 volts coming off my solar panels into my batteries, okay? I know what the reading's on there. Your controller came with a book. Grab that book. Learn it. Understand it. Know what all those little controls are. You don't have to know everything about that. All you care about is you got more voltage coming in on your solar panels than your batteries are rated at. So I got 13 volts coming in. I got 12 volt batteries. I know 12.6 is a full battery, so I got extra electricity going to my batteries right now. But it's not too much. If you go down to the next ones, you're going to see 14.2. That's the cutoff. The controller will automatically quit putting voltage into your batteries when it reaches 14.2. It does that automatically. That's what those settings are for. The 10.6 is the lowest it'll allow your batteries to go and it'll disconnect them from the system so that you don't go any lower than that okay well that's only if you have a load connected but if you're going through an, uh, an inverter you have to monitor the, that yourself you have to look at your controllers you say well i've got only this much voltage coming in uh, i can't run that thing it's not going to run on that much voltage if I, if I see 10 or 11 volts on there, I'm not going to run this thing. It's going to damage my batteries. All right. That's all. G-Bear signing off.